Look, when I said I wasn't planning on breaking down every single episode, I really meant that. But if MAPPA keeps assembling the animation Avengers for every single episode, it doesn't leave me with many options, to be honest. Following the more laid-back episode 2, this episode jumped right back into the action, and of course, this episode was storyboarded and directed by the legendary Hironori Tanaka, who also served as an animation director because of course he did. I'll talk about the visuals in the same order as the previous breakdowns, starting with the storyboards, and it was just pure cinema. Hironori Tanaka did the storyboards for this episode, not sure if he was the only storyboard artist, but you know the drill by now. Every shot was framed and structured in a unique way, with the angles and the perspectives being different from what you would normally expect from an anime. Did I mention that the angles and perspectives were really well done because they were? Notice how the car behind Makima slowly comes to a stop in an extremely realistic way. That's the kind of attention to detail that the storyboards provide. I briefly mentioned this in my previous breakdown, but whenever you see a scene taking place inside a moving car, the scenery is generally shown through the side windows where a single illustration can be used. Not here though, you can see the road behind Makima which would require competent CG aided camera work. As for the action scenes, I did feel that some of it didn't flow that well, but I think that's on purpose. The storyboards for the action scenes throughout the episode gives off that the camera is struggling to keep up feel. I'll talk more about that when I get to the animation part of the video, but as always, the storyboards were on point, consistently looking unique and allowing for some really cool looking cuts of animation. As for the artwork, everything was absolutely on point again. Hironori Tanaka's corrections as animation director were all over this thing, from Makima's face near the start of the episode to Denji's face right as he's about to transform. His corrections, or it may just be his animation altogether, can be found in the effects as well. His art has a distinct look which can be recognized. The eyes, the absolutely gorgeous shot that ends the episode, the absurd amount of detail all over Power's body in the flashbacks, you name it. Art of this level is incredibly difficult to pull off in a show with a ton of movies. Movement. The reason why something like this is even possible is a healthy working schedule which I assume this show had. Let's move on to the actual animation and go scene by scene. Right off the bat, we are greeted with characters in the background, characters that are not CGI and characters that are actually moving. There's character acting for the background characters. I hope you understand how insane that is. This guy here doesn't just walk past the camera, he rolls up his sleeve. Also look at the fluidity of this guy as he sets down the crate, especially given the level of detail on his outfit. I know of shows where even the main characters don't display this level of movement during non-action scenes, <clears throat> which studios attack on Titan. Stuff like this always blows my mind. Look at this shot, everybody is moving in a different way. Power and Denji's conversation is just more lively character acting, also the artwork is so good, especially for Makima's face which is heavily corrected by Tanaka, or just outright animated by him. The following scene near the vending machines is just more of the same. Amazing character acting, nothing here is a simple mouth flap, nothing is static, everything moves moves, everything feels dynamic. I won't rave about the character acting for too long as we have plenty of action to get through. Just know this, amazing character acting accompanied by Tanaka's corrections is just cinema. Let's quickly run through the stuff that I think are really impressive before we get to the action scenes. The character animation behind something as simple as Makima taking a sip, also the way the coffee moves due to the vibrations of the car engine, the sheer attention to detail is mind-blowing. And with that, we enter the first cut of action in this episode, that being power hitting Denji with her blood hammer and despite being a very short scene, it features some top-notch effects animation. With the wind around Denji's axe and the liquid animation as power forms her hammer, shortly after that, the bad devil makes his entrance. The amount of movement behind the bad devil picking Denji up and getting a taste of his blood, how is this show even real? Something as simple as Denji being thrown into the desk has so much care put into it. The desk collapses, but the scene doesn't end there. Denji starts stumbling in a direction. We can see different body parts of his go past the camera, making for an incredibly life like shot. Some top notch, I believe the correct term is morphing animation, as the devil regrows its arm and punches through the roof. It then punches another hole and jumps out of it. Throughout the sequence, his arm never stops moving, and that's not just the animation team showing off, it also gets across the fact that it's mad. The art of conveying emotions through body language is rare in an anime, but I'm glad to see that it's still there. Following that, we can find four consecutive crowd shots, and they can't keep getting away with this. How is every crowd shot 2D? Every shot featuring a crowd is hand drawn which is extremely impressive in and of itself, but it's not just basic 2D animation. Every background character has unique character designs and a distinct look, including different facial expressions and mannerisms. They are also heavily detailed and often actually animated. More amazing artwork follows which leads us to the flashback sequence, and just look at the detail on power. I'm not entirely sure if it's hand drawn or a compositing trick, sort of like a filter. Comment down below if you have a clue. You can feel the weight behind the bad devil flying off and you can see some amazing character 
character acting as the bad devil talks. It was there in the first episode as well. The devils have top-notch character acting, which is really impressive as they don't have the same design and proportions as the human characters, so they move differently. As the devil shakes Denji off, he flies around wildly. He goes behind the non-existent camera and then back in front of it, before being grabbed. Remember what I said about certain scenes going for that camera is struggling to keep up feel? Well, this is one of them. There's a fair bit of blur used in the scene, but Denji does appear to be somewhat off model during the sequence, so I understand blurring him. Blur isn't always a bad thing. This is followed by that iconic shot of Denji pulling the cord. I had previously mentioned that it was a Tatsuya Yoshihara cut, and many of you disagreed. Well, I still feel it's Yoshihara with Tanaka corrections on Denji's face. Those effects have to be Yoshihara. A slow zoom in follows, although every frame here is separately animated. Some impact frames and some effects later, Denji has left the frame. As the non existent camera pans upwards, Denji re enters the scene with some chaotic slicing and more impact frames. Just some amazing storyboards and amazing animation to accompany it. A tiny nitpick, they should have held on to the close ups of the devil and Denji for a bit longer before going to the white shot, but that's a tiny, tiny thing. Let's also not ignore the unnecessary character acting on a random character as we get to the most awkward looking cut in the entire episode. A slow zoom into the smoke, which abruptly cuts to a completely different frame, which then awkwardly disappears to reveal Denji and the bad devil. We are getting to the heart of the action here, and Denji is partially CGI, but not entirely. Maybe. I'm not very sure. The bad devil flying out of the building looks like it was filmed by somebody on the street below said building. I really like the storyboards. Denji is actually hand drawn for several cuts after that. Some amazing debris and effects animation follows. Denji's chainsaws almost feel like they're made of rubber as there are some aggressive smears on them, but it gets across the weight as well as the speed. Denji's body distorts to unnatural degrees as he runs towards his opponent. He jumps out of the frame and is reintroduced into the scene seconds later as he is jumping over the camera and slashes the devil, with some digital effects thrown on there as well. Some amazing debris and smoke animation follows. Most of the smoke looks like Tanaka's work. It's also worth mentioning that Denji was hand drawn throughout this entire sequence. A cool cut of the now CGI Denji emerging out of the smoke followed by the bad devil doing the same. More quick action featuring more CGI Denji, but this time he has a gloss to him. Looks really nice. I really like how the devil picking up the car is framed from inside the car itself. You can see the scenery change through the windows. The car exploding in the devil's face is animated by Riki Matsura. Some amazing effects animation which is to be expected. I think the column of smoke in the background is done by someone else as it wasn't there in the original Genga. The bad devil then unleashes some sort of a sound waste attack which is wonderfully complemented by the compositing. Some incredible debris and smoke animation follows. None of which is blurred which is a huge win. Denji's re-transformation is next and I've already talked about this scene in a trailer breakdown. Denji here is fully 2D but in the next scene he switches back to CGI. There's a really nice cut as the devil throws a huge chunk of debris at Denji which he cuts with ease. The camera work and perspectives are really well done here. Denji slides up the devil's arm and cuts through, emerging out of the resulting blood. He's 2D for this scene and the devil goes flying. The background animation during the same is a bit janky, but the next bit of background animation is quite good. A bit of a mistake in the next cut. As Denji is in the air, there's a strong cross flare, most likely caused by the metal chainsaw. However, you can see a cross flare even when a rock is fully covering Denji. Just a tiny thing. Some amazing 2D chainsaws, some amazing eye shots, a 2D close up of Denji all leads to that final, slightly underwhelming slash, followed by some gorgeous shots to mark the end of the episode, which about does it for the animation. The CGI version of Denji looked a lot more natural compared to the first episode, also it was a bit easier to distinguish between his 3D and 2D form this time around. The trick is to look at the wires around his neck. I won't go into tangents about the art direction and the compositing, both were really good, as always. I really liked the muted backgrounds early on. This was an amazing looking episode. Is it the best looking episode so far? Yes, yes it is. So that was it. Did you like this episode? Comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and until next time.